I wanted to show a video here. I found a new leak detector for R410A and we can s I made a report. I've been working on this report for the last 10 years and I've tested all these leak detectors on their sensitivity and parts per million. So it's in the report. I'll put it in the description of this video where I show the specifications of what they spec it at, but these are pretty meaningless on ounces per year and I actually test on parts per million and if you want to see the tests you can click on these links here and you can show how I do each test basically using a large balloon of 250,000 cc's and then adding 2.5 cc's that gives me 10 parts per million and then blending them down but uh, for the last few years at first it was the field piece SRL8 had 200 parts per billion with a B. I was using that. Originally I bought an $8,000 leak detector which was the HLD4000 but for $200 with the SRL8 I could get the same sensitivity on 410A. Now notice R22 there's quite a few leak detectors which are very sensitive on R22. 410 is the harder one. You can see everybody's way less sensitive on that and that's because they're using fluorine and not chlorine even though they're basically all halogen detectors apparently the fluorine is harder to detect. So the, uh, the SRL8 which I was recommended is very squirrely. The last couple years I've been using the Navic when I finally got around to testing it it was way less squirrely but it was having a hard time on the small leaks and its sensitivity is only 600 parts per billion and which is not very great so I've actually had the new field piece but I decided to add it to report and sure sure enough it is a pretty decent detector it's 100 parts per billion and it seems to be way less squirrely than the SRL8 they use the exact same sensor which is a heated diode actually the the DR58 the SRL8 I believe the Prowler used that sensor and um, and then the Navic is using that same sensor so the Navic was less squirrely just because they're dialing it down they're six times less sensitive than the field piece but I prefer to be more sensitive because I'm used to using for 20 years I used the gold standard which was the Baccarat H10 Pro and I've used both of those the Pro and the PM and those are both at 100 parts per billion and never miss a leak on R22 I mean a typical leak check for me would take five minutes maybe 10 minutes and I would tell you it's evaporator, it's solder joint yeah, and I follow up using Snoop to actually see the bubbles which if you're, on, if you're a leak that small the bubbles are the size of a head of a pin the entire soup, it's, they're super super tiny, you gotta use a magnifying glass to even see the bubbles you know for that size so basically what I'm showing in this video is I'm recommending the, the field piece the DR58 it's reasonably priced and you, uh, this video I'm going to show humidity sensitivity so it turns out the older sensors which are just good for 22 they're not humidity sensitive but the new sensors which are good for the fluorine refrigerants they're very humidity sensitive I want to show a video here. I'm going to be testing humidity sensitivity between the top leak detectors for R410A refrigerant. Humidity can be a problem in evaporators which are wet or attics or even your breath when you're breathing uh, while you're working. So first thing let's check just a breath test. So we got full alarm on the testo. Do it again. Mm. 
Now, let's just test blowing on it. And try it again. Let me get a little closer and blow. And get a little closer. Seems like the Testo is more sensitive to a nuisance that is. So let's go around and check things that are not leaking right now and see which ones are nuisance tripping. And I am high sensitivity on everything. The Testo, the Navic is green, and the field piece is the H. So let's check this tape. See if the tape has a Freon leak. Let's check this chair. See if there's any Freon leaks on that chair. Let's check this bag of movie popcorn. See if we've got any Freon leaks in there. Sewing box. Navix going off. I've been using the Navic in the field for a couple years. This one has a new sensor. It was more stable than the SRL8. See if we got any leaks on this doorknob here. So the Navic is giving a nuisance trip. And then it would make me check the doorknob again. And just kind of annoying. Because now you think, okay, I got a Freon leak on this doorknob here. And then you check it again, and then it mysteriously is gone. Now let's do the hand test because hands will have a little bit of moisture and it's really annoying when you're checking a pipe, you're rubbing the oil and your leak detector is going off so I'm going to put my hand around. So they all go off pretty big. Now let's check humidity changes going from indoor to outdoor. We got the door cracked open here. Not too bad. It's going back in. The Navic didn't go off. So here's going out. Going back in. Yeah, one hit on the Navic. Yeah, I'm getting about a seven on the field piece. Changing humidity. And then it zeroes out. So I'm going to recommend the field piece, the DR58 for R410A leaks, also for R134A leaks, any of the, the newer refrigerants. I like that it has a number here, you can actually get a, a readout. It has nothing to do with parts per million, but it's a general scale to tell you how big your hit is. If you go to medium, it's very low humidity sensitive. So if you're getting hits on medium, you probably do have a leak. And another thing I noticed on 410 is sometimes you can get cracks that actually self-seal. So if you're having a hard time finding a leak in a condenser, start the unit up, leak check it as it's running, or just rattle the pipes around a little bit. Sometimes you can have a crack that literally goes to zero and as soon as you put a little tension on it you can actually hear the leak with your ear and the oil is actually sealing it off where it doesn't leak at all and you won't even pick up bubbles or with the leak detector I see that rarely but I have seen that I hope you like watching the video thanks for watching